want to welcome you to another uh, live broadcast of Vision Branch Hebrew Assembly. I want to thank you all for um, just tuning in with us. It's always an honor and a pleasure um, to broadcast and want to apologize for being a few minutes uh, late. Um, I had to tie up tie up some loose ends on um, what, what we we're talking about tonight. Sometimes Father gives you stuff at the last at the last minute, and it's kind of like, okay, Father, what's what's the what's the deal? Because I wasn't exactly sure how to um, approach the subject we're going to talk about tonight. But it's a, a necessary subject. And it was prompted from a dream. Now, please let me know if you can hear me clearly out there. Because um, on last, the last time we broadcast, we were having some static problems. So if you can, if you can hear me okay, there's no static. Just, you know, give me a yes or, or a can or something like that. Let me know that you can hear okay. So what we're going to be talking about is resisting temptation. But it's going to be a, um, we're not going to do it in a, in a broad way. I'm going to go over uh, just a few things about temptation. Then there's a specific thing. Uh, and Toda and Nina appreciate that feedback. Um, Toda, Yolanda, Yolander. Um, and this is prompted from a dream. So not only did I dream this, but someone else had um, a dream also. Same, same night. So when that happens... I'm like, okay, something, um, I, I need to at least say something um, so that if someone is out there, might be in this situation, that they can deal with it appropriately. So let's pray. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohinu Malach HaAlam. Father, thank you for another Shabbat. I pray, Father, as we continue to celebrate uh, Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles, that you would continue to uh, be with us and be with all my Mispakah, Father, out there. And I pray, Father, that you help us to endeavor to prepare ourselves so you can dwell among us. Todah, Rabbah, for all that you're doing. Thank you, Father, even for this lesson. As we go into this lesson, I say Todah for your help. Because I know I can't do it of myself. I need your words. I need your wisdom. I need your insight to help your people. In the name of Shiach Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. Okay. So, we're going to talk just a little bit about resisting temptation. And to get a good... Um, perspective. Temptation and lust are linked hand in hand. Because if you remember in the garden, there were a couple of things at work. When Chawa and Adam were tempted in the garden, that there was lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Those things were at work, and you can see them very clearly. When you go back and read in Genesis 3 or Bereshit chapter 3. So I just wanted to read a few things out of the Brit Hadashah and out of the Psalms. It says, But lusted exceed, exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted Allahim in the desert. Okay, um, then Psalms 95, verse 8, Harden not your heart, as in the provocation. 
as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Now, when we get to the Mashiach and he starts to talk and tell us about temptation, he told us to pray. This is in um, uh, Matthew, or Matthew 6, chapter 13, verse, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the esteem forever. I mean, so that was a part of the disciple or model prayer. <laughs> then he also told us in Matthew to watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> so who wins in that battle is going to depend on what you're feeding. So if you feed your flesh, then the flesh is going to win. If you feed your spirit, your spirit, the Ruach, your Ruach will win and overcome. Now, notice what James or Yehukanai, excuse me, James or Yaakob says in chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. So temptation comes and the father said he would even try your heart to see whether you would obey his commandments or not. And a lot of our issues um, boils down to, are we going to keep his commandments or not? We're going to be tempted to um, go out and break his commandments. But do we have enough resilience? Do we have enough fortitude in us, enough love for his commandments that we don't go break them? Because we know what it says. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which Yahuwah has promised unto them that love him. So, the old people used to tell, say, say something. If you keep playing with fire, you're going to get burned. <laughs> and sometimes people love to um, play around with temptation. And, 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 and thinking, oh, you know, I can, you know, I can resist. But sooner or later, it can, that temptation can grab a hold of you. And send your whole life into a tailspin. And once you go into a tailspin, it's, it can be very difficult to um, pull yourself out of a tailspin. <laughs> That's why he tells you to watch and pray that you don't enter into the temptation. There is no sin in being tempted. It's only when you give in to the temptation and you commit um, the act that is against his word. Because we all are going to be tempted. We're all going to be tested, tried to see what's in us. Some of us are being tested and tried right now. Some of our test and, and try tribulation comes from some of the closest people to us those that we hold near and dear to our heart. And what he's trying to do is he's, he's really testing you to see if you love him. What are you, are you going to do the right thing or are you going to give in and fall to the temptation? So, this resisting temptation can come on many levels. But there's a particular level that I want to um, address tonight. And the reason I address it is because I saw it a couple of, I saw it in a dream. And then someone else had a very similar dream. And that lets me know somebody out there might need this help. Now, this might seem um, far-fetched, 
But trust me, um, things happen to people. And you would be surprised at what people go through. Now, we know in Leviticus, the 18th chapter and 6th verse, it talks about none of you shall approach to any that is ne near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am Yahuwah, the nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother. Shall thy not uncover? She is thy mother, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. So notice here, it deals with the mother, the natural mother. But in the next verse, it says, the nakedness of thy father's wife, shall thy not, thou shalt not uncover. And we see an incident of this uh, when Reuben slept with, one of Yaakov's concubines, <laughs> and he lost his in first he lost his firstborn inheritance rights because he did that travesty. So temptation can happen on many levels, but the specific one that I want to talk, I'm not going to get real deep into it. I just want um, to make sure that I put this out there. Um, because if I don't, and the father gave me the dream to put it out there to help someone and I don't put it out there, then that could be required of me. So I'm like, okay, I don't really understand it totally father. I know what I dream. Um, so I'm just going to put it out there just in case, um, someone runs across this video and needs that help. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or the daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. <laughs> now in this dream, it was a brother and sister that was, in this particular dream, the sister was trying to tempt the brother to, as the scripture says here, to uncover her nakedness. And in the dream, he was able to resist. Um, then the other dream was the opposite. It was the brother that wanted to uncover the uh, nakedness of the sister, but the sister resisted. So no matter what the circumstance is, if you find yourself in this situation, and this is talking about blood relatives, of course. It's not talking about um, someone you just call your sister or brother. This has to do with blood relatives. If you find yourself in that situation, you know, I just read it to you, that that is not supposed to happen in Israel. So resist it, get far away from it because that is designed to lure your soul into what the Father has commanded us not to do. So take heed, <laughs> take heed. And no matter what's, what you feel on the inside, you need to feel his commandments and his statutes. And say, I can't, I can't break my father's commandments and do such a, a dastardly thing that he has commanded us not to do. Not only for this, but we should be taking this approach for all uh, his commandments to resist. Because it, it not only comes in this form, it comes in so many forms. You know, it, it comes... Um, you'd be surprised what people deal with out here. Um, we, we're talking about a full range of things that people can be tempted to do, or commit adultery, steal. Um, it could be, um, uh, lying, bearing false witness against your neighbor, 
um, bestiality, homosexuality, all these things come, they exist, and they will tempt you. And especially, um, some of us might have a, um, have a, a, how could you say? It, it might be something that's a little closer to some of us than others. You know, lying, just take for instance, lying might not be something that that's um, ever approached me. But I might have a problem with women. So everybody's going to have things that are going to tempt them in their life. The question is, are you going to resist? Are you going to resist or do you just fall headlong into the temptation? Because you're not going to receive that crown, according to what we read, by giving in you've got to resist you've got to hold fast hold your ground and he talks about that if you resist it what comes up against you sooner or later it will depart but the reason it doesn't depart for some people is because they don't resist it <laughs> So, this is definitely an area. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. That's what draws us away. Remember in the garden, we if we were to go back over to the garden and start to look at that, the serpent started asking questions. And saying that there was a knowledge available that Allahim was trying to hide from them. But he wasn't trying to hide. He, he didn't want them to learn anything but from him. So whenever the time would have been appropriate, he can teach you. He can show you. But they got their knowledge and their understanding from a different source other than him. They got it from the serpent that was there in the garden with them. So these things are going to coexist side by side with us until the day we die. So you might as well get your warrior suit on, strengthen your spirit, strengthen yourself, because Temptation is going to happen. Even in the fourth chapter of Matthew, Mashiach was tempted. The tempter came. And he tried everything in the book. But what did the Mashiach rely on? He relied on the word of Elohim. And that's the same thing you've got to rely on. You've got to build and fortify your spirit man. You've got to fortify him in the commandments, the statutes, that what Elohim hates, you hate. So sin has become something that you despise, that you withstand, that you, you can't see it happening because his commandments are so entrenched in you. And keep in mind, Ms. Bacock, Many of us, you know, we want others to come into this. But your main task is to save yourself from this untoward generation. You know, because many people don't want this. They don't want his statutes and commandments. It's just not in them. They, they just don't want it. So you got to have enough, enough discernment to know when to pull back. When you giving somebody something. See, because sometimes we think we're going to hammer it home. Hammer it, hammer it. 
And if I if I just keep telling them enough about him, if I just keep drilling these commandments in them, some folks is just not in them to keep his commandments. We we went over, we just went over the series with um, King Shaul, and it was to the point that Yahuwah told Samuel to stop crying for Shaul. So we've got to know when to pull back with people that we're dealing with and take those resources and plant them elsewhere. Because it's definitely a temptation because when we keep hammering, hammering on people, most of the time, if, if they're not being receptive or open, it pushes them further away from the truth. But, you know, we think we're doing something good. But, you know, we've got to look, we've got to be able to, as this, as the Mashiach says, be as wise as serpents, as harmless as doves. And it says in Proverbs that he that wins souls must be wise. So their temptation can come. It's so tempting every time you see them. Boom, 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 boom. You want a hammer, but you got to use wisdom. You, you've got to let the Ruach lead you. Because you, um, you hammering, hammering, hammering compared to letting the Ruach give you a few words well-placed, just a few well-placed words because you listening to him would do more good to the person than you continually, um, you know, trying to hammer them. Now, this wasn't for any specific person or anything. This is just, I'm uh, as I'm talking, the Father just led me down that path. So I just implore you to use wisdom. My dear Miss Baca. So again, whoever um, was in that situation we were talking in, resist the temptation. Because you do not want to go down that road. It's a road filled with indignation and shame. So resist it. Resist it. Resist it. I, I can't say it enough. My, I just it just keeps re reiterating in my spirit, my ruach. Resist it. No matter what temptation you are confronted by, resist it. Sister might look good, resist it. Brother might look good, resist it. It's not it's it's not gonna be anything but heartache. Resist it. Don't bear false witness against your neighbor. Don't steal. Don't covet. Be content with what he's given you. And let him open doors for you. You know, I've, I've been there. I've tried to open doors for myself. And let me tell you, it doesn't work. But the, the minute I said, okay, let me start doing what he tell me to do and really hone in on this thing. Man, to my doors flying open, they were flying open. I was like, just in starch amazement, like hallelujah. So I just encourage you that you will be tempted. There is no sin in being tempted. There is no sin to me in tempting. <laughs> okay, now as far as somebody asks, can anger be a temptation? Well, remember how in the New Testament or what's called the Brit Hadashah, it says, um, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Now, anger can 
take you to a point that you're not showing his righteous disposition. What do I mean? A person can get so angry that they that they want to see somebody dead in their heart. So anger can take you a whole different whole lot of places if you let it control you. Now there is a such thing as righteous indignation or righteous anger. Um, and you see that all the time. Uh, you, well, you see it in scripture display uh, when Phineas um, thrust the spear through the, the, um, through the woman that the woman that was brought in the camp and through one of the Israelite men, because he brought one of them in the camp that they had uh, just um, been in idol tree with at uh, Bel P um, Baal Pierre. So you see that he thrust through, and what did the father say? He got he gave him a covenant of peace forever because of his righteousness behind his anger. So. You know, it's it's one of those things, you know, the enemy wants you to be angry for the wrong reason, but you have to be angry for the right reason. And you can't let anger be your fueling fire. Your fueling fire has to be the word of Elohim. So... You have to operate in the word. The word tempers anger. Think about how the word of Allah, he, he could have killed us off a long time ago. How many times did it say he was tempted in the wilderness? And he, he had fear, just fierce anger because of them breaking his commandments. But he was still merciful. So there's a balance that has to take place. And, and I don't know your specific situation, but if you if you have something specific, um, you can email me at info at living branch.org. Um, that way I can hone in and, you know, maybe address. Um, maybe address your specific situation. So the father is uh, like Nina said, he's so long suffering. And one thing I want you all to do, okay, go back. I want you to, I want, because sometimes we don't strategically think about what's going on in our life. I want you to go back and look at where the enemy has been attacking you lately. Where, where is your temptation coming from? Because once you identify where it's coming from, that's where you need to build. Because any enemy will tell you, he's not going to go to the highest part of your wall to try to climb over or try to bring you down. He's going to go to where it's weak, where it's weak, where he can get instant access and, and get into your spirit and your ruach and throw you all off course. So I want you to go back and I want you to think about where the enemy has been or where, where you have been, because it doesn't always have to be the enemy. Because remember, it says we're tempted when we are drawn away of our own lust. So where is your temptation come from coming from? That way you can go back and strengthen yourself so that you can resist that temptation. So this is what you need to strategically do to, to help yourself in your walk. This will help you down the road, trust me. It will help you. So I want to pray because many of us might not have the understanding of how the enemy has been attacking us. 
or how our temptation has been causing us to stumble. So, um, you know, in all of our getting, I want us to get our understanding. So I'm going to ask the Father to give us all understanding tonight so that we can grow in him. And that's the end result. We want to grow in him so that his commandments and his statutes, precepts, and judgments are ingrained in us. So we don't have to second guess when, when, when the enemy approaches us. We can, we can call it what it is or when the temptation comes our way. You know, we can call it what it is. Oh, this is the temptation. Let me go ahead and get, get this ready so, so I can resist this thing. All right, let's pray, Ms. Bacar. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah, Elohim Malakah Father, I pray for my Ms. Bacar. And I, as your servant, Father, I endeavor just to do your will, to help your people. And I pray, Father, that you bring understanding to your people that they might understand how they're being tempted in their life and how they can fortify themselves against that temptation. Father, we're but dust. And we've leaned so much to our own understanding. But we're going to take a turn on this one. We're going to not lean to our own understanding. But in all our ways, we're going to acknowledge you so you can direct our path. Now, Father, we ask you to strengthen all that are under the sound of my voice. All those that are up against temptation, I pray, Father, that you show them the inner workings of that temptation and how they can fortify themselves in the word of Elohim against it. I pray, Father, for um, those that might be struggling with the specific issue that I mentioned, that dealing with brother and sister, that they will understand that that is against the word of Elohim, and that you do not smile on it, and that your fierce anger and wrath will be against it. Father, I just ask you to give all of us understanding. Father, our knowledge is futile. Our understanding is futile. We need your help. We need your understanding. We need the light of the word to shine forth in us. Now, Father, do these things that your name be esteemed. We bow down humbly before you, not even worthy to lift our eyes and approach your gate. Father, just give us understanding. We count ourselves as the dust of the earth. But, Father, with your commandments, your statutes, we can rise from the dust and we can receive that crown of life that you have promised to us. Help us now in every way. In the name of Mashiach, we pray. Yahusha, Amin. Amin. All right, Ms. Bakai, like I said, if you um, have questions or, you know, want to deal with specific things, simply email me at info at living-branch.org. So I pray everyone... Um, is doing well and this lesson just know we all have our temptations and our struggles that we are up against so I, I will tell you this if if you if you are in a situation of temptation or struggling or struggling don't hook up with someone weak <laughs> you know Someone that's got the same vulnerability as you. It's like two people jumping in the water and neither one of them can swim. Who's going to help who? So link up with people that are fortified in prayer. People that are going to, you know, not give you what they think, but just give you what the word says and steer you in that direction. You know, I would hate to see, you know, both of you jumping. What does it say? The blind lead the blind. They both fall in the ditch. Don't don't go hooking up with someone that has the same weakness in the same area that you do. 
as the recipe for disaster. So, you know, if if you if you have a question, like I said, I have an open door, you know, just email me at info at living branch.org. And if you haven't joined um, our website, this is just a glimpse of what our website looks like. Um, you know, you can join and become, you know, uh, you can send me messages. I get emails here and messages here on the website all the time. We, we're not pro anybody here. I'm just trying to help who wants to be righteous. That's my mission. So if you haven't joined already, you know, go over, check us out. Um, you know, up here, you'll see, like it says, watch live. This lets you know when we're on. So just know I love you and I'm here for you. And I, I know it can get rough out there. It can get rough for all of us. But I tell you, as time grows nigh, we need to draw nearer to him and closer to him. Because, you know, things things are winding up pretty fast here. Time is moving fast. So I just urge you, you know, stay connected. I know some of us don't have a um, assembly. And, you know, we don't have anybody physically in our area that we can fellowship with. So that's one of the reasons I do these broadcasts, broadcast and make myself available because I know that exists and that's what the Father told me to do. So if you need anything, you know, as far as spiritual help, just, you know, give me a holler, shoot me an email, go to the website, send me a message. You know, if you struggle by yourself, it's because you want to struggle by yourself. You know, there are others here that are willing to um, join with you in prayer. But, you know, you have to reach out and let us know. All righty, Ms. Paca. Just a few little things. Uh, you all know about the Hebrew Ten Commandments for your children. You can get those. Um, and also the Hebrew Passover story. These are available. Just another teaching tool to train our children. We can't neglect them. If you haven't already, you can join our bookmark of witnessing team, which is, um, you can go to this website, www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org. And if you would like to make a donation to help us in our efforts and what we do, you can do it through mail, PayPal, or our online giving tool. All right, remember, resist temptation. Resist temptation and get, you know, when you're resisting temptation, just know you're not in it alone. There are others out here that are resisting right along with you because it's so tempting. Think about this. It's so tempting. So many people have given in. You'd be surprised. People, um, a lot of the, a lot of the people that are in Hollywood and the music industry and all these other industries, they've given in. You know the temptation to be rich, where the door was open and it was dangled in their face, but all they, you know, had they have to commit their soul to the devil or to the enemy. That's a temptation. He dangles it right there. You can live this. But I come back to what Daoud said. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of Yahuwah than to dwell in the tent of the wicked. I don't care how much riches they have. It's not worth it. So temptation can come in many forms. So it's better to just resist and struggle it out than to give in. All right, Ms. Bakar, remember, make this the best Shabbat ever, and we love you. If you need anything, just email me at info at living-branch.org. If you have prayer requests, you can send them to prayer at living-branch.org. All right, this is Midday Yahoo Ben Yashrael saying Shabbat Shalom.